What's up, prayer warriors? We are the warriors. What do you do? <laughs> What's up, prayer warriors? What it do? What it do? What it do? What it do? This your girl, the assistant in Christ, your purpose pusher, property is Burma, London. Coming to you today with another video. This video ain't for everybody, but listen, because for those that is for, this is just confirmation. And those that listen, it may be for another time in your life. On this journey. And this thing we call life on this journey, in your purpose, in your destiny, is so profound. I've been just. YouTube journey for it don't even seem like it. Um, I think going on three years. I'm like, wow, it don't even seem like it. But that just goes to show you how time waits on no one. And I know I'm not the only one feeling like. I was just laying in bed. I was meditating this morning. I said, Lord, this is so different for me. This is so different for a person like me. And when I say that, like even with my background, even with me born, the way I grew up, and you heard me tell my testimony. Just even from a child. Like this part of my life is so different for a person like me. And to be honest. I never saw my life being like this. That's why I say life is a journey because for some of us on this journey, you don't know where it's going to take you to. And I had no idea the places I've gone and how far I've come in life. I couldn't even imagine my life being like this because how I grew up and not having many people, you know, in my life to push me. It's like, it ain't like it is. Like, I'm just using that as an uh, expression. How God really kept me in my childhood, in my teen, you know, just through my life, period. And I always say, how my life is a prophecy. And that's why God chose me to have that part of the fivefold ministry on my life. Like, my life is literally a prophecy. Like, it has been spoken because of my background and the things that I've 
once again and let's pray. So I know when people may you know, see me that I grew up with or that haven't seen me in a while. Or sometimes when I see them, they be like, you look so different. Um, or they'll be like, your mama would be so proud of you. You know, because they knew. They knew me when I was younger. And my mom used to call me baby girl. So anybody, when I'm somewhere, I'm going somewhere with this. When I'm somewhere and I hear that word, hey, baby girl, I know that's, I know that's somebody that I grew up with. And I thank God for what he has, like, literally brought me. God has brought me from a mighty long ways, a mighty long ways. If somebody would have told me that I would have been walking with God for over 20 years before I even started, I bet you something I wouldn't have believed. It's just something I wouldn't have believed. But it's the experiences that I have had in my past life that make me say, I can't believe that my life ended up being this way because I came up, you know, very poor. Um, my mama did the best she could. Our living conditions wasn't the best at all. And I got judged for a lot of that. Like, people literally judge you on things like that. They don't want that. You know what I'm saying? But I ain't trying to get into all that. You done heard my testimony of me growing up. And if you didn't, just go look at, you know, revisit some of my videos. Amen. Um, what else I want to say? So I was mad in the bed. And like I say, I've been I have been walking with God for the last over twenty some years. If somebody would have told me that I was gonna be married, me and John been married twenty four years, and in April it's gonna be twenty five. I would have never believed that I would have been married. Not looking down on myself, but just the, my upbringing. Like, nobody would have told me that I would be married for 25 years or been a hairstylist. These are characteristics that I didn't see in myself as I, when I was young. Like, you know how you might have somebody to, like, your parent may push you. You know, I want, you know, you're going to be this in life. And, you know, they help you along the way and want you to go to college and help you to buy your first car. And, you know, they instill the things in you, life situations and, you know what I'm saying, your, 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 your future. They help you get to your future. My mama didn't know about a lot of that. Like, my mom didn't buy me my first car. Um, you know, she made sure I went to school. Even my mom gonna make sure they go to school because you gotta go to school. Um, like, I was a high school dropout because, you know, I got teased and bullied a lot. So when I got to high school, like in 11th grade, I dropped out. Not because I was dumb in there, but just because I didn't fit in. But my mom did push me to go back and get my GED. So, you know, she didn't push me like, she didn't know nothing about going to college and being able to afford me to, you 
know, she wasn't able to afford to buy me any car. She did the best she can, but my mama, you know, she didn't have nothing much. But she always was there, spoiling me. You know, we had our good time all that time, but she did have, even though we was poor, she still had me spoiled. And she looked out for me. Um, and when I, when, I, when I got older and I started working, because it wasn't no waiting, you know what I'm saying? When I turned 18, I started working. And I started taking care of her. So I took care of my mama when I turned 18 all the way till she left. Like she never had had a house before. I was able to get us our first home, stuff like that. But if somebody would have told me my life would have ended up like it is now, I wouldn't have believed it. So people be like, well, how do you know God is real? That's how I know he is real to me. Because of life situations. Like God literally taught me how to, um, to be a cosmetologist. Like, I didn't have that. Oh, you know how some people, when they done it, be like, I'm going to do hair. Like, I didn't know what I was going to be or what I was going to do. I just grind and worked hard. I had, I had no clue of how to even be a hairstylist. So for God to allow me to go to cosmetology school and literally teach me and give me that gift of being a cosmetologist is a gift that he literally gave. And it's different when God gives you something. It's something that nobody can take from you. Um, I know I would, when I first started out, like, being a cosmetology, I went to school. I didn't know how to shampoo or nothing. God gave me that gift. So once I started, you know, my husband paid for it. And then when I got out, I still had more money than I had to pay. I didn't just go right in. I feel the cosmetology, I, the reading part, I passed. But the, um, what is it called? Wait. The reading part, I passed. But the hands-on part, like the cutting, um, the finger waves, all this stuff, you gotta, you know, you gotta do all that. And I forget what it's called, it'll come for me. Like certain parts, I will feel. I feel that. I feel that the practical. I feel the practical certain parts of it. Like I feel a part of the cover, the rod, and I forgot what else I would. I think it might have been the haircut. So I had to go back, and then it was um. I passed, and then I didn't pass the rod part. So I had to go back and take that me sign and go back here to pay twenty five dollars, but I didn't give up. I went back and I took it, took it. So when I started doing cosmetology, when I was eight, when I got my license and I started doing hair, and it was certain hairstyles I didn't know how to do. I was there behind the client, and God would literally teach me and show me how to do the hairstyle literally guide me through it. He gave me that gift, right? Like we hear the Holy Ghost is a gift. The evidence of speaking in tongues. Like I, when I was in school, I never was a cheerleader. I never spoke in front of people. I was so shy. So if anybody would have told me I would have been doing this, talking in front of people, or even when I used to be in church. Because I never did nothing in school. I was on no basketball team. I wasn't on nothing. Um, God would literally teach me how to do that style. He 
taught me how to do what to do. Do it like this. He literally taught me. Spoke it. Other people was like, they didn't see it. And I wasn't going to go. And God was like, I thought you wanted to go to God and Josh's school. I was like, I do. He was like, well, go here. He even told me where to go. He saw me through it. So years later, I went back for my um, instructor's license to teach. I was faithful in that. The first time I went, I didn't like how they did taught, so I ended up quitting. But the pastor brought the bombs like, you gotta go back. So I ended up going to back to Miss Alden's. And when I went to go take my test for the instructor, I was so nervous. Because you know, you, when you go for an instructor, you have to teach the people that's watching you, that's with the, you know, from cosmetology, they watch you doing the practical and your reading. So the people that's on a board of cosmetology, you have to do three different boards and you don't know which one you're going to pick. And whatever board you pull about your head, that's what you got to teach them. And you got to give them their papers. I was so nervous. But guess what? I passed it the first time. I didn't have to go back a second time. You know that was God. So, this part of my life, I mean, if anybody would have told me that I would have been in this place, um, taking care of my mom the way I did, getting her out of the park from behind that bar room, buying us a home, and then now I'm in, the, in our second home, me and my husband. You know, even when I was living on, where I was living at, we, he, you know, we lived there together because we only been here seven years. So that was, became his home too. When we got married, he was our home. And now we in our second home. Some people don't, haven't even owned their first home. They be having a hard time. And a lot of times, and I'm talking like this because I'm going somewhere. A lot of times in our life, we're on a journey and we are fighting for, and there's nothing wrong with it. The, you know, the natural things, because we want a better life for ourselves, for our kids, you know. And a lot of times, people want us to do things their way instead of the godly way. In which I didn't know the godly way, but I knew I wanted to be married and stuff, you know, be a wife because I didn't grow up with a daddy. You know what I'm saying? My mom had boyfriends and stuff like that. And then when I got older, I used to run them off. I used to play about Carrie. But you know what? That's neither here nor there. I digress. Um, I knew I wanted to be married, so, but anyway, the spiritual things in life, the spiritual side of things in life, I think that's the hardest thing a lot of people deal with, is the spiritual side of life because first of all you gotta believe in a God that you cannot see it takes so much faith to believe in God it takes so much faith to believe in God when somebody come and witness to you and talk this how Miss Ida did with me Miss Ida taught me about tithes offerings um she told me that the guy that I was engaged to, that wasn't my husband. And I was like, well, how am I going to know about my husband? She was like, Verna, you're going to have to write it down and tell God what you are looking for in a husband. You may not get everything, 
But write the vision down. I was like, okay, so I did that. And when you are looking for a certain thing in life, you know, we come up, especially in the natural things, we'll settle, especially as some women, we'll settle. Some things we'll settle for. But I learned not to settle. So I knew what I was praying for. I knew what I was asking God for. And I didn't want to settle. So John is what I pray for. Somebody opposite of me. But in this part of my life, I was I was in the bed and I was and I was just meditating. I say, God, this place is this this place in my life is different. It's so different. I'm in transition. And you know, when you hear people saying, oh, I'm in transition. Transition is never, it's not, especially, especially spiritual. It's so different. Even in the natural, it's different. When you're in, a trans, when you're in transition and you're in natural, you're trying to get from one place to the next. But you still can't rush it. It's, it takes time. No matter what it is. First natural, then spiritual. It, it has its ups and downs. When God is transitioning you from out of one state of a spiritual lifestyle into your next. It's a journey. And it has its ups and its downs. And I wrote some things down as I was just sitting here. Because I, I, my husband left and I woke up this morning and I was just looking around. I say, Lord, I thank you because I couldn't even imagine my life being like this. You have truly blessed me. It might not be the biggest, biggest, biggest house in the world or you know what I'm saying? Just use that as a metaphor. Or big is the next person house or look like the next. But it's the thing of being in your own home. And God opening up doors for you to buy a home. Some people don't even, like I said, don't even get their first. And if they do, they be scared to move out of it to go to their next. You know what I'm saying? So even when I was moved um Selling our home and trying to buy. That was a transition. And it wasn't easy because we was a transition from one home to another home. We were selling and buying. That's a transition. It's a transaction that's taking place. Because we're going to be in a whole different dimension. In a whole different place. In a, like, this home is bigger than the other home. You know. It's different, and we didn't settle. You know, we want to open a floor plan and two bathrooms. I wanted an en suite with the two sinks, his and her sinks. And that's what we got. And I didn't settle. Um, and, you know, we didn't settle. So, and I have been, enjoyed being a cosmetologist. I have, I enjoy being in this spiritual life. I wouldn't change it for nothing. But it takes a lot in the spiritual life. It's so different. Why? Because we have to believe in a God that we cannot see. And it takes a lot of faith. But in the spiritual sense, in the spiritual realms, in the spiritual dimensions, it's so different. And men want to control that, but they can't. They're not in control of it. And that's the part that get a lot of people stuck and confused in church. Um, 
with their leaders to knowing the difference between the leaders and God and Jesus and the Holy Ghost. Your leaders are here and God is way up here. God is in a whole nother dimension. They can't even compare to God. But like leaders are here to encourage you, um, testify, bring you into God to equip you, to get you to believe in Jesus Christ. But it still takes you believing and having your own personal experiences with him for yourself to know that okay does Jesus exist did Jesus do the things that they say is he still work the miracles and this voice that I'm hearing is this telling me the positive things and not to do this just you know your own personal experience that's this small voice Saying, don't go, don't get involved with this, don't, you know what I'm saying? Or God may send somebody else, and you know it's confirmation. I hope I'm making sense. The spiritual life is different from natural, it's totally different. And God takes us from glory to glory, different dimensions in life. Different experiences. You may, you know, need healing, need this, need that. And there's certain things that only God can do. No matter how much he use men, no matter how much they are knowing it, no matter how many people they pull into a conference, no matter how many conferences you go to, no matter how many church services you go to, it's nothing like a personal relationship with God for yourself. Nobody can take God's place. Nobody can take the experiences that you experience for yourself with God. It's so different. So I say this place right here is such a spiritual place for me. It's such a spiritual place because I am in transition. In this part of my life is spiritual. It's different. I have never been in a dimension like this before. I have never been in a, in a dimension like this before. I never experienced a, a, a dimension like this. It's so different. This journey is taking me down a path I've never experienced before. It's almost like I'm in a time capsule. It's almost like I'm in a time capsule. A spiritual time capsule. Waiting to be open. But this spiritual time capsule can only be opened by Jesus. Only Jesus can do it. Man can't do it. It's like I'm in a spiritual time capsule. You know, when you're in a spiritual time capsule, people be like, I'm going to put this in there. I hope somebody going to find they open up and they read and they get you. Whatever they didn't put in there, getting it out. It's like I'm in a spiritual time capsule and I'm waiting for God to open it up to catapult me into my destiny. But it can only be opened up by Jesus. Man can't do it. I can't do it. Only God can open it. So he can propel me into my destiny. It's 
so different. And there's nothing that I can, it's like, I don't even know where I'm going to end up at in this journey. I don't know. But it's spiritual. Just like I just got through explaining all the different scenarios. It's like I'm in a time capsule. Am I the only one that feel this and they just couldn't explain it? But as I was sitting here and I was in the, in 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 my um space where I does my video at, I say, God, I've never been in a place like this spiritually. Because I've been seeking and seeking and I'm like, God, I'm ready for my next. And in this test, he is testing me my ups, I have my downs, but it's more ups than downs because it's peace in the time capsule. <laughs> it's tears in the time capsule because I'm waiting to be released. And only God can release it. I can't do it. Nobody else can do it. Only God can do it. It's me seeking in a time capsule. It's me wanting to go out and do other, you know what I'm saying? But it's like, nothing that I do, it don't work. Because faith without works is dead, because you got to keep seeking. But I'm coming to the realization even though I stay busy and I stay seeking I still gotta surrender to God because only God can do it it's gonna be the right season in the right time it's the patience in the time capsule it's you wondering because you still gotta remember you waiting on God in your in your transition and in the transition he is quiet on certain things in the transition he quiet during the test <laughs> he's there you, you know you feel the presence you feel the peace you get frustrated. It might be a day, and it might not be here all the time, but it just might be that one day where you just get so frustrated, and you just might bust out and cry. God is with you when you bust out and cry. The tears and the way that you are feeling is in a time capsule, waiting to be. And even though you ain't telling nobody about the frustration, what happened that frustration, it's going to be a part of your testimony. You're going to be able to help somebody else during their journey, their transition. You're going to be able to encourage them. It might, it's dealing with your finances in the transition. Because when you're in transition, you coming out of whatever you did before, and you go on to your next, but it's like this. A paradigm shift. That's what I said to her. I said, Lord, I'm in a I'm on a, in a paradigm shift. And it's like this, it's shifting me. I'm on a paradigm. And it looked like it's going just like this. And it looked like sometimes it's just stop. It's like a paradigm. It's shifting. Like it's on the axle. You know how the world's on the axle and it be shifting? 
and it's just like it's just all kind of things is happening while you on that paradigm shift while you in transition is how it is and you know when something moving slow like that somebody ain't but you on the road and you in a rush to get to your job you running late it's like everything get in front of you trying to stop you the light turn red they got a car accident they got hurdles in the road they got they got a back up on the interstate and you just sitting there and you waiting because you already late or you or you don't want to be late. But it ain't nothing that you can do about the accident because it didn't happen. Ain't nothing that you could do about the red light because it's red. You got to stop. It got stops along the way and it's taking you to your next. That's how I feel. And there's nothing I could do about it. And I ain't put myself here. Because there's places that I have been in life and things that have happened in my past. So far as just life. I said I ain't ever want to be like that again. But when God bring you into it. Ain't nothing you could do about it. And if you get out of the time capsule before time, it's going to be a fair because you open it, you inside of it, twisting it. And you're like, I'm going to get out of here spiritually you now. You twisting it at the bottom. You ain't, we, we don't want to wait till God open. We twisting it. We just retwist. Don't get out before time. Because I be wanting to do that. I be, I, be, I be the same way. But it don't work. And I can force it. But the blessing will be right there. And I miss it. I can't miss it. I can't. I don't miss too many. I can't, I can't afford to miss my Kairos moment. I can't afford it. I say, Lord. It feels like I'm in a time capsule. And I never, you know what I'm saying? You know this God giving it to me because what made me even think of that? What made me think of like my spiritual life is like a time capsule waiting to be opened by Jesus himself. Only God can do it. And I have no idea where he's taking me. I know what the purpose is. You know what I'm saying? But the purpose and the destiny, the season and timing, is going to all meet up together. And I don't have no idea what that's going to look like. I've never been in this place, in this dimension before. It's different. It's so different. It's so, so different. It's so different. And I have my days. I have my days. I have my days of frustration because you don't know. Just like I said, when you're running later, you don't want to be late for work. And you going on, then you run into a whole bunch of traffic because they got an accident. And it's backed up. You can't get off. You can't turn to the left. You can't turn to the right. You got to just sit there. And wait. You ain't know the, the red, every red light you get to. Every light you get to is green, but as soon as you get through it, to it, it turns red. And you got to sit there until you get the green light to go. And you're not in control of the lights. You got to go when they turn the green. You got to sit there. Oh, what's going to happen? You're going to get a ticket. You're going to cause an accident. Anything can happen because you ran that light. First, naturally, and spiritual. 
anything can happen if you just get even if I get twist my own cap open and get out and pop my head out trying to get out I'm gonna mess it up I've never been in this dimension before hold on a second what is a time capsule a time capsule is a historic catch of goods or information, usually intended as a deliberate method of communication with future people and to help future archaeologists, uh, anthropologists, or historians. I might not be saying that right. It says, I'm sorry, y'all, I'm turning this on. Hey, I'm sorry, I was chewing it on because my mouth was dry. It says, many, it says, many time capsules today contain only artifacts of limited value of future, to future historians. Historians suggest that items which describe the daily lives of people who created them, such as personal notes, pictures, videos, and documents, will greatly increase the value of the time capsule to future historians. What will your future produce when God lets you out of the time capsule? Nobody knows what's in there until they would open the time capsule up and get what's in there out of there. They have no clue of what it is or what it says. Or this, this, this how I feel. A time capsule is a container holding hysterical records or objects representatives of corn culture that is deposited as in a cornerstone for preservation until discovery by some future age. I've never been in this place. I've never been in this, this spiritual place that I am in now. It's so different. Who else is feeling like this? I know I'm not the only one. But you just didn't know how to explain it. I feel like I am in a time capsule. And only it can only be opened up by Jesus. Okay. So, dimension or dimensions. A measurable extent of some kind, such as length, breadth, depth, or height. A mode of line or extension of which there are three in space and two on a flat surface, which corresponds to one of a set of coordinates specifying the position or the point, the physics of, physics of it, an expression for a derived physical quality in terms of fundamental qualities such as mass, length, or time, raised to the appropriate power acceleration. For example, having the dimensions of length and time, an aspect or future of a situation, a problem, a theme. So,
I never, it's like, it's like, it's a whole nother dimension in a space where you've never been, something that you've never experienced before. A measure of extension in one direction or in all direction. Um, having many different features of quality especially in the way that makes something seems real or not too simple. This physical, intellectual, environmental, vocational, social, emotional, and spiritual health. There are four dimensions to human life. These are the mind, the body, the external world, and the inner realm. This place right here is so different. It's so, so different. Anybody else feeling like that? say I literally feel like I am in a time capsule and only Jesus can open it. Everybody don't get that experience because people are so scared and so fearful of the spiritual things. They make excuses. They are always looking for the natural way or they just don't stay in the, 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 the place that they in because it's 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 frustrating. Um it's time consuming. It's the patience, it's the waiting and you have no clue. And I'm talking about spiritual. That natural thing we can get it down pat. But see that spiritual thing is baby it's, 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 it's the spiritual thing that gets rough and hard for a lot of people. Even me. It's the waiting. It's the process. It's the paradise. A paradigm shift because it's like this. And it's literally moving like that. Especially when you're going to another dimension. And I'm talking about spiritually. Don't die. God said you're going to weep if you faint not. I can't tell you how many times I want to unscrew this to cap myself. And I just got this scenario this morning as I was sitting here. But I told God, I said, God, I never felt like this. I've never been in this space. And sometimes, when you, and a lot of times when you in that transition, you have the peace. But it's the waiting. And you break the peace. Don't break the peace. <laughs> and it's Jesus. That's how you know it's real. Who can have peace in something like that? But it, it, it don't happen overnight. It's, it's, it's a place where it's, it's another dimension. As you get further in God. In the spiritual realm. Just like when you get older. It's levels to it. This video ain't for everybody because everybody's not on that level. Just like I say with, 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 with the leaders, the five-fold ministry, whatever that is, whatever you're doing, natural or spiritual, it's right here. But nobody can compare it to God because why? He on a whole nother dimension. Nothing can compare to it. 
and they are trying to erase Jesus. They are trying to erase the memory of Jesus, the miracles, the signs, the wonders of who Jesus was. They're trying to erase it out of people's minds. They want to erase who he was. Like, it's okay to do this and that, and it's no consequences. Sin and abomination and you never come out, it has consequences. When you sin and you go do something you ain't got no business, it's consequences. If you run a light, it's consequences. If you do anything that's not like God, or even in the natural, it's consequences. If you go to your job and you keep being late, or you go to school and you keep... It's consequences in everything. They trying to erase the fivefold. You can't erase like they were saying, oh, defund the police. If it's laws that set in place, if it was no law set in place, people would wreak harvick down here in this earth. You can't defund the police. It's good and bad and everything. But see, when it comes to their spiritual, they try to make people believe, oh, prophets ain't real. This ain't, prophets are real. It's the fivefold. You can't erase it. If you erase the fivefold, you, you, you're trying to erase Jesus. You're trying to erase the things that he has sent people down here to do. They are trying to erase Jesus. Jesus, his memory, his miracles, his signs, his wonders, but they would never be able to erase him. No matter what, it's not going to happen. This world is so contaminated. It's so contaminated. And if you allow yourself to get caught up in the things in the world, it is going to contaminate your mind, your vision, your hearing, your smelling, your voice, your future, your next dimension, your next level. And I'm talking about spiritual. If you get in that word, yeah, we go. It's being all this stuff being wrote. It's it's false everything to whatever. It's imitation everything, but it's also the real thing. Jesus is the real, for deal. He is the creator. You can't erase him, but they are trying to erase Jesus. Why? Because this word is so contaminated that they would do any, anything to erase the memory of Jesus out of your mind, the spiritual. They want you to be so focused on the natural till you lose hope in the one that you need to have the hope in. Satan is after a mind. He want to contaminate it. This word is so contaminated. Till they trying to erase Jesus. They literally trying to erase him. It's not going to happen. Always so many false prophecies of false everything. It's an imitation to everything. I say this word is contaminated and they want to erase the prophets they want to erase the past they want to erase the apostles the prophets the pastors the teachers 
the evangelists. They trying to erase Jesus. But they will never be able to do that. Because God said there is a fivefold and there is a remnant. Nobody can take that away. The spiritual part have so many people hung up. Because why? It's so easy to step out into that world and just be in the world and just live your life and not even worry about the spiritual. It's so easy to forget what God done done for you, just like I was going over. That's why I went back from my childhood to now. That's something that can't be erased. It's my testimony. Now, you know, when you go through something, God can give you peace, heal your heart. He say, I'm here to heal the broken heart. And when your heart is broke, that means he can mend it back together again. But so many people don't allow him in to heal. They don't listen at that voice saying, don't go here. Don't go down the road. Don't, even when we not saved, God will warn you about things. Either you can listen or you don't have to listen. I remember when I was younger, before I was even saved, and you know, when I just thought it was okay to do this and do that, and God gave me a dream and warned me about this person. That they wanted to harm me. And I told somebody, but they didn't believe me because of his status, because how he looked, because of what he drove. And where I lived there behind the club, like, who you ain't let them. They, and I told them about the dream. And the next morning, that very person left their number on my car, and I called them and told them to come down the street to my house, and I showed them the phone number. And that person started just trying to get with me when I was younger now. And God warned me about something that they wanted to do to me that would have devastated me for the rest of my life. And I used to talk, and I told them, I said, God already warned me about what you're trying to do. And one day I went around and by their house. And I was sitting on the couch and I was brought to you. Even though God won't warn me, I didn't know no better. I still went around there. And the Lord spoke to me just as plain as day. And I wasn't even saved. And I told the person what they wanted to go, what God warned me about and everything in the dream. And the Lord spoke to me in that voice and said, You better get up and you better get out of here and you better get out now. Babe, I slipped through that door so quick. And I ain't have to worry about me no more. And God, when he said, do not, whatever you do, do not go back around that person. He had to warn me in that dream. And they used to laugh at me when I told them. And I bet I never trusted them. Because God had to already warn me. And I wasn't even saved. I wasn't in church. I was still living in the park. I was young and dumb, and I told the person, I said, I had a dream that they, God warned me about them. And they was looking like, God ain't going to do her now. He don't, you look at where you, you know what I'm saying? People look at where you live and what you got. But men don't think like women think. And the next morning, the next morning, the next day when I got up, their phone number was on my car. And I called them down there and showed it to them. And they were shocked. I said, I told you. And I still, you know, because of who they is, how they look, you know. And I was sitting down at the couch. The Lord said, you better get that still small voice. Said, you better get up out of here and you better get out of here now. Asked me, did I... And I was in my own car. I ain't. I didn't. Know, I. I never got in that car. I was in my own vehicle. And I 
and now on the bed before they know it, it's the, the, like I just slipped up and got up out of there. The Lord said, you better get up out of there, you better get up out of there now. I slipped through that door so quick and got on my car and went home. I ain't even say I was finna uh, get up off the couch. I was sitting there, we was watching TV. I just got up and looked like my body just slipped through the door. And I went out of my car and I went home. And they ain't never had to worry about me again. God warned me, even before we, I we used to be, he was like, just come around and we must come watch TV. I wouldn't get in his car though. I was in my own vehicle and the Lord, I had a dream. It's good and bad and everything and they trying to erase God. They trying to erase Jesus. And I went got this here. Now this community, Creamer, this is a name Green Creamer. And I love to drink my coffee. This is what I drink, community. Ain't nothing like that community. But then people are going, all cream tastes the same. No, it don't. This great value, this community. And this great value, Queen Creamer, don't taste nothing like this. This the real thing, and this is the false. They got false everything. False, fake everything. It's always an imitator. This the real prophet. This the fake one. But you got to know that you going to know the difference. Because this don't taste like this. Even when you get name brand tennis shoes. They be like, oh, all tennis shoes, all purses the same. No, it's not. A name brand purse, if you pay good money, it's going to last you for years. And it's going to still look brand new. Versus a purse that's cost twenty dollars, forty dollars. You can have it, it's gonna start tearing up, weighing up, weighing down, being just because it's it's not real, it's not real leather. It's fake. It's a it's you know it's not a it's, it's not a name brand purse. A name brand purse gonna outlast a purse that don't have a name to it. Just like this community coffee cream. The real and the fake. And it's bigger. But guess what? This here tastes way better and you don't need as much. They do not taste the same. They have a different taste. Imitation crab ain't nothing like the real snow crabs or crab that you buy. It's imitation. First natural, then spiritual. You can't erase Jesus. Jesus was the prophet. The main prophet. God spoke him here. Nobody ain't no Mary for Jesus to get in there. He spoke Jesus in her belly. He spoke it. Can't erase Jesus. You can't erase what he say is real and what's not. They be like, well, why the women, um, they women ain't supposed to do this. Women ain't supposed to do that. Because the men ain't stepping up to the plate. They get in position. They be in there sleeping with the women, beating women, raping women, sex trafficking women. How you going to be on go outside and you doing all that? In abomination. Men with men, women with women. Can't on a man can't have a child. A man and a woman can, but two men can't have a child, nor two women. It's an imitation really it's imitation. Hell is real. Heaven and hell is real. They they get they they have the kids and they just leave the women like they the woman raised the children by themselves. Why you think they stepping up to the plate? God using them. That's why. Look how I had to come up and take care of my mama. My mama was my child. I shouldn't have to do that. But I did it. And God honored that. I literally took care of my mother. She never had had a house. Never. 
But even before we left out of there, I took, I stopped when I got, I told her when I get up on my feet that I was going to take care of her. And that's exactly what I did. The smile eye. This world is so contaminated. This world is so contaminated. And they trying to erase Jesus. Joel, chapter 2, 25. And I will compensate you for the years that the swarming locusts have eaten, the creeping locusts, the stripping locusts, and the growling locusts, growling locusts, my great armor which I sent among you, and you will have plenty to eat and be satisfied. And praise the name of the Lord your God, who have dealt wondrously with you. And my people shall never be put to shame. God is going to restore the time that you was in, the time council. He is going to redeem the time that I've been in the time council. That he is going to literally open up himself. And you shall know without any doubt that I am in the midst of Israel to protect and bless you. And that I am the Lord your God. And there is no other. My people will never be put to shame. The promise of the Spirit. This is why God uses women. Because the men, they don't need so many men that step down from the plate. They so in the world. Tell the women got to step up. They got to be the protector of the kids, their home, their livelihood. It shall come about after this that I shall pour out my spirit on all mankind and your sons and your daughters women will prophesy your old men will dream dreams and young men will see visions even on the male and female servants I will pour out my spirit in those days. And that's the Amplified Version. The KJV Version. And I will restore to you the years that the locusts had eaten, the cake of worm and the caterpillar and the palmer worm, my great armor which I sent among you, and ye shall eat in plenty and be satisfied and praise the name of the Lord your God that had dealt wondrously with you. And my people shall never be ashamed. And ye shall know that I am in the midst of Israel and that I am the Lord your God and none else. And my people shall never be ashamed. And it shall come to pass afterward that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your sons and your daughters, your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your old men shall, your old men shall dream dreams. Your young men shall see visions. And also upon the servants and upon the handmaids, in those days will I pour out my spirit. And I will show wonders in heavens and in the earth, blood and fires and pillars of smoke. Now this going to happen. This in the word. Go read your uh, Joel. But I just wanted to read some of that. 
God ain't gonna be playing. And I will show wonders in heavens and in the earth, blood and fire and pillars of smoke. The sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood before the great and the terrible day of the Lord come. And it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be delivered. For in Mount Zion and in Jerusalem shall be deliverance, as the Lord has said it, and in the remnant whom the Lord shall call. There is still a remnant. God is pouring out and they try to erase him. His, but they can't. It'll never happen. That's why I say this world is so contaminated. Because they don't want the Satan himself do not want you to see the spiritual side. He wants you to lose hope. He wants you to lose faith. That's why I say in this place that I'm in right now, it's such a spiritual place. It's so different. I have never been in a dimension like this before. Don't give up on God. Cause he won't give up on you. He's able. Don't give up on God. Cause he won't give up on you. He's able. Oh. Don't give up on God. Why? Because he won't give up on you. The spiritual side. The spiritual. That's what a lot of people give up on. They give up on their spiritual life. And God be choosing and using women because men have went to the left. They father these children and walk away. They want to beat the women, rape the women, um, sex traffic the women, gang bang, lie, steal, cheat. The women got to step up. Controlling, manipulative. And they're trying to erase God. But you can never erase Jesus out of the equation. Because he is the creator. We just have domain, dominion down here. But you are not in control as much as you think. God is in control. That's why I say in this place is different. It's different. It's different. It's different. So I'm going to let y'all, I'm going to go ahead on and get off of here because I'm past my time. And just remember, don't want to twist the time capsule, the cap off your Spiritual time capsule yourself. So I'm God, I'm the only person that's going to be able to do it is Jesus. Do that mean you stop seeking? No, because whatever you're seeking, whatever it ain't right, you ain't going to be able to get out of the capsule. The only way you're going to get out is Jesus going to allow you to. It's different. In these last days, it's different. Because this world has become so contaminated and so self-absorbed till they're trying to erase Jesus and erase the firefall of what he said was going to happen. They got fake everything. They got the name brand corn, the fake, fake corn that you eat. Just everything. It's always something that's fake. 
Why you think the real costs more? If you go to a Louis Vuitton store, you're going to pay thousands of dollars for Louis Vuitton because of the value what they have put into it, the substance they have put into making it. Everything is real and authentic. It's going to last you for years upon years upon years versus an invitation. With God is eternity. With Satan is hell. With God is eternity. With Satan is hell. And it's eternal. Where the worm will never die. Where it's going to be weeping and gashing of teeth. When your soul is going to burn forever. Where the worm will never die. You will be tormented. If you leave here and you die and go to hell, it's eternal damnation. If you live and go to heaven, it's eternal peace with God. But in hell, it's burning with brimstones, with weeping and gashing of teeth, where worms are going to be living in your soul. And you will never be able to get out of it. It's going to be eternal. Choose ye this day whom you're going to serve. No one can serve two masters. No one. Heaven and hell is real. Just like I was saying in that dream, don't wait till you die to try to find out if it's not. God said, get up off this couch and get up out of here. I ain't just sit there like I didn't hear that voice telling me to get up out of there. And God showed me in a dream that that person wanted to harm me. And I had a witness because I told them about the dream. Because I lived in a club behind the bar room. And I was looking like this. And he would know I was looking like this. I was keeping it real. And they was just looking like this here, the imitation. But because they thought it was this here. And I was this here. That he didn't want to look at me. And the next day the number was on my car. And I called him and I showed it to him. And he turned out to be this. And I turned out to be this. And every time he used to see me, he used to bust out laughing. Because I slipped through that door. He didn't even, he didn't even know. It was, I was out that door just like that. And the person that I told it to, they still living right now today, and they can vouch for it. And if they ever hit this video, they'll know what I'm talking about, because I told them the dream. I ain't going to say the person's name, but they're going to know what I'm talking about while I was still living in the park on 46th Street. And I was still young. And I had a blue Ford. And they left their number on my car, and I caught them down there, and I showed them the, the number. And they were shocked. God is real. His fivefold, and you can't, you can't erase it. God said, "Don't take nothing from His Bible. You can't add nothing to the Bible. You can't take nothing away." And it's good and bad. It's just like this water. This sounds fake. This sounds water, but then they got the name brand water that's gonna taste way better than this water. I got my juice mixed up in here. Nah, it's good and bad and everything. 
Satan is the imitator of Christ. He will make you think. But he's just an imitator. He can he imitate everything God do. He and he imitates it. This God and this him. And he wanna make you think he bigger than God. He wants you to look at God like this. And he wants you to look at him like this. But it's the opposite. And people will believe a lie before they be believe the truth. They go seeking after that false stuff. Witchcraft, readers, soothsayers. They got itching ears. Itching ears. You're going to know the difference in the taste. If it's fake, you're going to know it. Because adult, you're going to know it. Ain't nobody got to keep you going to know it. Just like they're trying to erase God. You can't erase him. He won't allow you to. And they wonder why they have hurricanes. And he angry because they trying to erase him. They don't want people to do the spiritual things. But you can do all the natural. But when it comes to the spiritual, you can't do it. They think it's for certain people. But it's for God. It's for whosoever will. You can't stop God. But they trying to. God say they are trying to erase me. This world is so contaminated. It's so full of sin. And it, con it done contaminated people's minds. They the sex trafficking. They, they, and they, treat, they got some men that treat women like garbage. And they'll kill them at the drop of a dime. Jealousy, envy, hatred. People's hearts are so cold. They got calluses on it. They got calluses on their hearts. And if he could break you down like a fraction and get you to not to believe, that's what he gonna do. You gotta choose. God say, don't send your child out and you feeling it strongly or you have a dream and he warning you, he to the warning. It's real. Life is life in. But if you have an ear to hear, that's still a small voice that's warning you about the negative thing. Listen, because it's different nowadays. You might not have a chance to slip out the door like I did. Because I knew how to handle myself. I was raised in the hood. I had to learn. But everybody don't have street sense. Everybody don't have street sense. That's why God is raising up so many women. How the men think they get here? You was born of a woman. You sure wasn't born out no man. And then you got to learn how to treat women like they trash. They get them and sell them like they ain't nothing. That's how you got here. Lust. Perversion, perverted, sick. Woman, give up. Like, share, subscribe, and comment on the video. If you made it to the end of the video, like, share, or even comment.
subscribe to the channel. Hope you made it to the end of the video.